starting on uh, the facilitating the departure of Americans uh, from Sudan. Uh, what is that American boots on the ground? What are what? How many of the estimated Americans who are there do you intend to get out, or can you plausibly get out of the country? Well. First, uh, we have not put American boots on the ground uh, in Sudan, other than for the brief period that we brought the military in to evacuate our personnel. <clears throat> we have placed uh, ISR assets, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance assets, over the land evacuation route to help facilitate safe travel by land from Khartoum to the port of Sudan. And we have started to see uh, a more regular pattern of convoys begin to arrive, including convoys that have Americans in them. Once at the port, then, we are uh, using diplomatic facilities in neighboring countries to help those Americans uh, with their onward travel so that they can get safely out of the country. We anticipate that this route will continue to be available for Americans who are looking to leave, and convoys continue to get organized, depart Khartoum, and arrive at the port of Sudan. As I mentioned, we have also uh, begun to move naval assets for any potential contingencies uh, off the coast of the port of Sudan. Uh, those are the major ways in which right now uh, we are providing the kind of support and facilitation to help Americans who want to leave be able to leave, and Americans uh, are in the process of availing, availing themselves of that. And as I said before, uh, we have seen Americans begin to show up in the port of Sudan. In the port of Sudan, yeah. Thanks, Jay. I'm just following up on that. And maybe this is what some of the naval assets are for in terms of contingency planning. Are there U.S. emergency assets outside of or beyond the intelligence capability and assets that could be called on should one of the convoys that has U.S. citizens inside of it come under attack? So I don't want to speculate about a particular contingency, but I will say this: uh, the president uh, immediately after. Uh, the outbreak of violence several days ago uh, did order uh, the deployment of capabilities to the region uh, to be able to deal with any number of contingencies. Some of those capabilities were used uh, to be able to get the personnel from our embassy and, and the military has walked through the specifics of that. Capabilities in uh, countries near Sudan remain available at the President's disposal should they become necessary. We don't, at the moment, have any plans to put those to use, but we are prepared for a range of contingencies, and the naval assets will add to that, but that is not the sum total of what we have available in the region, should it be necessary. Yeah. Thank you, Victoria. I know what was a busy weekend for you. Um, you say the U.S. is temporarily pulled out of Sudan uh, and will return when it's safe to do so. Who is responsible for the safety or the security of the U.S. Embassy right now? And curious if you'd respond to the charges over the weekend that, in essence, the Biden administration now has lost two U.S. embassies during the president's term. And then I've got another on Labro, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Well, so first, what I would say about the, the question of security at the embassy compound outside Khartoum is that I don't want to get into specifics on how it is that we are uh, taking steps to ensure its continued security, only to say that we had a contingency plan in place. We are now executing that contingency plan. Uh, that can't guarantee, obviously, the security of the embassy, but we believe that we have put steps in place to be able to protect that compound uh, in the days and weeks ahead, and that we do intend uh, to resume operations as soon as we are capable of doing so. I'm not sure what you mean by a charge about, quote, unquote, losing embassies. The, uh, the broader diplomatic community, including the entire United Nations community in Khartoum, uh, has closed down. Um, in Sudan, uh, diplomatic personnel from allies and partners around the world are being evacuated. Um, and of course, the United States has evacuated its personnel. Uh, this happens from time to time, and if you look back over the course of months and years, you see military-assisted departures from embassies. You see, in some cases, non-combatant evacuation operations. Um, that's in the nature of having 270 total diplomatic posts around the world. There will be times when the conditions uh, are not conducive to sustaining operations in all 270 at the same time. Uh, but our goal, as I said before, is to be able to resume operations in Khartoum as soon as we are capable of doing so.